Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. In today's video, just kind of spend the evening with me. Me and the kids just finished up school. I've got a few things that I'm going to be doing this evening. One of them being, I'm going to experiment and try to make some mozzarella cheese because y'all, I got milk coming out my ears. So, uh, last year I tried. It did okay. Thought I'd try again. <laughs> so, it's not a how-to video, but shoot, I thought I'd bring y'all with me and we'll see how it goes. And got a few other things going on. And uh, anyways, hope y'all enjoy it. I need two gallons of milk for this mozzarella recipe. So I uh, don't want to waste my precious cream because it's supposed to be skim milk anyway. And so I'm gonna get that scraped off. Y'all, Candy's cream is like so thick. Like, look at that. Man, it turns into butter in no time, in no time. I pick and I tell Andy, I'm like, she is a butter cow. She is a butter cow, that is for sure. And she's been doing so good. Um, I can't wait for, I'll show y'all this evening when I milk. She's getting there, she's learning. So, um, you know, back when I was training Belle, me and her both were learning, and I don't recommend, <laughs> if you're learning how to milk a cow, that you and the cow both are learning, because, I mean, there's some things that I done back then that may have, hurt the learning process, which now, I mean, is fine. She's fine now, but I do wish that I would have learned on a cow that already knew what they were doing. <laughs> Last year at this time, I had a sweet, sweet subscriber send me this little ladle here for my regular mouth jars, because I have more of these than I do the wide mouth, unfortunately. Um, and if you're still watching today, again, thank you. I have really put this thing to use. All right, I have a lot of people ask me about my pot here. Um, I got this pot as a wedding gift and it is my most used pot. If you've watched my videos for any amount of time, you know that, but um, got it from Belks. It's a built more pot belly stock pot. You can still find them on their website um, and I'll link that below. I don't get anything off of that or anything from Belks, but I have so many people ask um, about this and that's where it came from. So we're gonna pour in our two gallons of milk. I found the recipe I'm gonna use today. I found that on uh, venison for dinner. I absolutely love her stuff. Um, I have followed her for several, several years. But she does have a YouTube channel as well, but I think her big thing is her blog. And I, I've learned a lot from her through the years. There's still a little cream in there, but it'd be all right. All right, I've got it heated up just a tad. So I'm gonna add in some citric acid. Like I said, not a how-to video. I'm just experimenting, so trying to follow this recipe. So now, according to the recipe, I've heated it up to 88 degrees. I'm going to add in my diluted rennet. We're going to stir that in. Okay, it's set for about 20 minutes, so it says test it for a clean break at a 45 degree angle. Okay, looks pretty clean to me. So now we're gonna give it a stir. It says stir until you break them up into about one inch pieces. So that's what I'm gonna do here. This is something that is way out of my element. So <laughs> if I don't do something right, like I said, I'm just, just trying it. And how are we supposed to get better at something if we don't just keep trying? So, all right. I get some of these, there's a few big pieces still floating around in there. While this is heating up, we're also going to add two-thirds of a cup of salt. So 
I've already got that measured out there. So the recipe says we're looking for our curds to start sticking together. So y'all look here. See the big glob? So they're starting. So we're gonna let it keep going in the heat. And this recipe, you're not supposed to have to work it with your hands. So we're gonna see how it goes. Now I'm stretching my mozzarella. I've already given it a few good stretches. I think it's about done. It actually looks way better than the last I made, last time I tried to make it, so I got high hopes. So I'm just letting it soak in the hot way. And this is how I'm stretching it without having to use my hands. Just letting it stretch over the spoon. But I'm looking for it to be smooth and not lumpy. And we're getting there. My last good stretch there. She said she likes to put hers in like a rectangular container instead of the run of the mill ball that you see people put it in. So that's what I'm gonna do too. Just let it drip a little bit. I'm just gonna let that kinda set here and it said put it in the refrigerator it said put it in the refrigerator overnight so that's what we're gonna do then we'll have pizza tomorrow night or something I don't know try number two in two years time of mozzarella cheese so I'm excited to try it I'm scared it's too hot to try it right now let's see well it's stringy like it's supposed to be Mm. Okay, look at there. I'm so proud. So we've come down here across the creek. Look at all them eggs. Cause the mud holes are full of tadpoles. I got one and it got one. And the kids love to try to catch them. Did you catch one? Fire. She's going to drink a tadpole. Are they good, Tiger? <laughs> There's one right there. Don't pull them out of the water. It feels so good. Crazy, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Any of y'all, when y'all were kids, no, used to love to play with tadpoles. I know when I was growing up, like, I was always excited for the tadpoles to hatch because I wanted to play with them. Last year, we tried to, we caught a few and tried to raise them till they turned into frogs. They never died. They just never turned into frogs. So I ended up uh, letting them back loose. So we had them for a long time and they never turned into frogs. Hello. Tiger. <laughs> I think she thinks they're good yummy. I got one. Did you catch one? Let's see. Yeah. Yep, you sure did. Oh no, you have a leaf stuck in there. That one has a leaf stuck in it. Look at them. <gasps> it's hard to grab the ones that have already hatched. Are they all slimy? Yeah, look. This one's have already hatched. Oh yeah. We can keep dropping. Well, time to go get some chores done before supper. Gotta get everything fed before we're fed. That's just how it works around here.
job. Hey, girl. Good job. There we go. Great job. The critters are took care of, so next we gotta take care of the people. So tonight, tonight we're having some palm bread, um, pork chops, corn on cob, and green beans. For those of you that may not know, what we call palm bread in this area, which I know it's called different things all over the United States, but it's kind of like a giant biscuit. Some people call it biscuit bread, but most everybody around here calls it palm bread. And it's delicious if you've never made it. So, first thing I gotta do is I gotta run down to my grocery store and grab some green beans. people ask me in previous videos what the, it looks like out my kitchen window so if you see me looking out there it kind of overlooks the garden I'm watching my little man mow out there can't make green beans without throwing in a little salted pork Looky there, looky there. Some beautiful palm bread.
Looking good, looking good. Now that right there is a pork chop. Big hogs make big pork chops. It's a fine looking supper there. I'm gonna show you what this looks like in the middle. So see there, not cornbread at all. It's more of a giant biscuit. Oh boy, we must have some palm bread. Yep. Look pretty good, don't it? Yeah. Mm. That's better than any cornbread you're gonna eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna get us a plate fixed. Here we go, supper is served. Looks pretty good. I didn't finish good. taking a chef for you. I didn't finish taking a cook today. So yep. Chicken nuggets and the 2K biscuits. Looking pretty good. And the cork and the green beans. Yep. Well, usually after supper, y'all know it about usually wraps up the video, but since the time's changed, we got a few more daylight hours. We got a little bit more work we got to get done. So y'all remember us showing you the herbs up here in the flower bed. Well, it used to be the flower bed up here in the front yard. I made a mistake a few years ago of planting yarrow in there with them. Big mistake. Um, so I'm gonna try to move my herbs because the yarrow is gonna just kill everything because it's taking it over. I pulled a lot of it up, which I have more. I realize the medicinal benefits and all that. I have more. I just shouldn't have planted up here in the front yard. <laughs> The sage looks a little rough. Yeah, I don't know if it'll make it, but. We're gonna see if we can dig them up and move them. Try to get all that yarrow out of there though. We'll see. I got some pretty flowers in there too. Yeah, right there's some I was just stepping on. Yeah, you have to watch, it's full of flowers. That's one ant. Yeah, that's time. Find a... That spreads too, but I don't care if that spreads. At least it don't like take over. So word to the wise, if you're gonna plant yarrow, plant it in a pot. All right, what else is in here? Oregano right here. That? Yeah. That's got taken over my grass. Yeah, but it goes all the way to here, see? Cause oh, yeah. it spreads too. And over here. This was lavender, but I'm pretty sure it's dead. Yeah. I think it killed it. I think that's over with. Yeah. Well, it's... That's my main ones right there though. We'll buy some. Let's we'll see if we can't find some lavender somewhere. Just wanna make sure this don't have no yarrow in it. We're moving the herbs out here to this newest bed that Andy built. We're out here in our main garden at the house. If they live, they live. If they don't, they don't. We'll just do it again. That's right. But they were sure wasn't gonna live up there because that's why I think I, that's why that looks so bad. It almost died last year. Well, it, it was surrounded by yarrow yeah. last year. Like it just kind of smothered out. That's what I'm saying. I know one thing. We're gonna have to put some hay or something down in here because the little weeds is already starting to pop in this. Yeah. Look at them in there. Me and Maggie planted us some English peas and a lot of them are coming up. All of them we planted didn't come up, but they were some old seeds too, so. But we got them planted all along the fence line there so they can climb up this fence. I don't need no shovel in this dirt. Just rake the soil back. What? They want to come back in. I don't know. We got them spoiled. Yeah. All right. What about this one? You want to keep all this down here together? That's fine. We need to go get our multiplying onions. Oh, yeah. Because we'll put them right along here. Okay. As long as there's no yarrow in this. I know. We'll be good. We need to water this in, though, because we don't have no chance of rain for the next few days. Okay. But, yeah, we'll plant our onions. 
right here along the edge here and we'll show everybody those things so we got something here that we've never had any well we don't have no knowledge or nothing about these these are multiplying onions we brought these back from well in georgia down at down at a uh, house tools um we came home with some um so i believe he called these the potato onion and so when he dug these up out of his garden they were in a bundle just like that right there and uh all you do is break them apart and plant an onion and then once they come up and make their bundle make a, a clump of them like that you can dig it up pull however many you want off of it put it right back in the ground and you've got like a never-ending supply of onions so like i said this one's a totally new one on me i'm not i don't know i'd never heard of a multiplying onion until i started hearing them talk about them so out of this one bundle here looks like we're gonna have I'm not gonna break that apart. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're gonna have ten different plants to plant. And uh, <clears throat> from my understanding, you know, up here where we're a little colder than where we're colder than down south, we'll probably have to dig these up in the fall before it starts getting really cold and put them up somewhere to store them. And then the following spring, like right now, we'll come back out, break our bundles apart, and replant them and have a never-ending supply of onions um you know they won't get no bigger than that right there you know they'll just be like your regular old sweet onion but um still it's pretty cool when you have something that's never ending so we're going to find out how they do up here now uh house tools does offer these for sale however i'm pretty sure they're sold out right now but you may want to check their website just to see but i do think they're sold out at the moment or for now i think they're sold out for the season Jacob, bring me that shovel. Look at the sunset. Oh, I know. That sunset's pretty over mm -hmm. there. Like that? Yep. Put that one back in. I'm going to put some back in. Put that back in. But there was actually more than what you see here in this bundle, but I've done broke it apart and gave, uh, I gave my mama a few. But really all you need is one piece right there and you'll have your own set, your own onion started and then you can just continually break them apart as they multiply. There you go. Dig that out just a little bit so it'll be a little bit deeper. Like that? Yep. Well, y'all, it's finally getting dark. With this time change, it'll work us to death, won't it? Ain't that the truth. <laughs> it's like you don't get no downtime before bedtime. That's right. That's right. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope y'all learned a little something. Be sure to say hello down in the comments. We love to hear from you. And anyways, till we see y'all on the next one. Have a good one. Y'all have a good one.